Hello and welcome to another Leak Code problem. Today we're going to be doing the problem of the day for June 14th. It's going to be minimum absolute difference in a BST. So given the root of a binary search tree, return the minimum absolute difference between the values of two different nodes in the tree. And so what you should know in a BST is the, val the values are already sorted. And so the rules for a BST is the nodes to the left of the root are strictly less than the root, or like, yeah, and then the nodes to the right of the root are strictly greater. So for example, for four, actually just draw this out. So for four, we have a six, we have two, three, one. Okay, so for four, everything to the right of four has to be greater, in which it is. Everything to the left of four has to be less. Same thing for two, everything to the left has to be less than two. Everything to the right of two has to be greater than two, but it has to also be less than four, right? Because everything to the left of four has to be less than four. And so we can we can use this to our advantage, knowing that a binary search tree as opposed to a normal tree is already sorted. So if we actually look at the numbers in, let's, let's actually, the nice thing also is an in-order traversal for a tree will give you a list of sorted numbers. And so in order to remember is left, right, root, or sorry, it's left, root, right. So let's take a look what that will look like. We'll start here. We go left as much as we can. So left, okay. So let's have our, our traversal here. So we have a one. Now we can't go anymore. So we recurse back up, two. Now we go to the right, three. Can't go anywhere else, recurse back up. Can't go anywhere else, recurse back up. Finally, go to the right child. And so if you actually look here, because of the way the BSTs are written, the minimum absolute difference in a BST is going to be between two consecutive consecutive numbers. Because, for example, if I have a difference between two and three, that's always going to be smaller than the difference between two and numbers that are past three, right? Because they're, they're sorted. So if you have a sorted list, the minimum difference is always going to be between two numbers that are right next to each other. So it's going to be either here, 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 here. So one way to do this problem is to actually do a, you know, in order traversal, you store all these numbers. Then you just, for every two numbers, just compare the difference. So here would be like one, 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 two. And so this would be one. And let's look at the other example. So we have zero, 48, 12, 49. Okay. So here, let's take a look at what it, our in-order traversal would look like. So we start at one, go left as much as we can. So right here, can't go anywhere else, zero. Can't go anywhere here, recurse back up, one. Go right, can't go anywhere, so. Now remember, we go left as much as we can, so we're over here, 12. Can't go anywhere from here, recurse back up. Okay, now we take the root and we go right and we are done. And now let's take a look at our differences again. So we have one. So that's already going to be an answer is one. And that's our answer. Because then nothing can be smaller than one. So that's how you would do this. And it would be pretty straightforward. You can just have an array. And then every time you visit a node, you can just mark that value in the array. Now, what we're actually going to do here is we are going to do the same thing, except we're not going to use the array. So because we don't need the whole thing. If you think about it, for an in-order traversal, if we just have some values, right, all we need is like, the value that we're at and the value before. And so for example, let's, let's actually show you what that's going to look like. So let's say we do this traversal. So we start at one, we go down to zero, and we're going to make our initial value before infinity. So that way our difference is going to be maximized. And so let's just have a res here. And that's going to be infinity as well to start off. And we're going to try to minimize that. So we're at the zero. This is a value. We can't go anywhere else. So we're going to remember, we're not going to have an array. So we're just going to have a last value. Let's call that L. And then we're going to have the current value. So our initialized last, last value is going to be infinity as well. So everything, so last value is going to be infinity. Res is going to be infinity. So let's actually make this bigger, read some stuff, make it cleaner. Okay. So we are at the zero node and we're going to say, okay, we're at a node. We're actually, we actually care about this node. So let's just compare the node, the node that we're at minus the last value. And so that's going to be, and it's going to be absolute value as well. So it's going to be L minus the current node, we'll just call it C. And so that's going to be infinity. So is infinity less than infinity? No, it's not. So let's actually also just let's initialize this to infinity. 
Okay. Now, so infinity is not, but now we need to update the, the last value to the current value we're at, because then we, when we go to another node, we need to compare that to the last value. So this uh, last value is not going to be infinity anymore. It's going to be zero. We recurse back up. Now we're here and we need to do the same thing. So we need to say, okay, we're at this node. What's the difference between this node and the last value? Well, it's going to be one minus zero. So that's going to be one. Now, is the result smaller than one? Yes, it is. So that's going to be one. Now we need to update our last value again. So the last value is going to be one now. Then we're going to go to the right. Now we have to recurse down here first, right? We go left root right. So we're at this 12. We can't go anywhere else. Do the same thing. So what's our last value? Our last value is one. What's our absolute value? Well, it's going to be one minus 12. That is going to be 11 because absolute value is result less than 11. No, it's not. Okay. Now we make our last value 12. Recurse back up. So we're at this 48, do the same thing, 48, or it's actually going to be, sorry, it's going to be last value minus 48. It doesn't really matter because it's absolute value, but it's going to be 12 minus 48, 36 here. It's 36 less than result. No, it's not. Update last value to be 48. Go down here. Okay. So then we have 48 minus 49. It's going to be one as well. Is that less than result? No, it's not. And then we update finally last value would be 49. So instead of having this array, right, of numbers of an inner order traversal, all we really need is a last value and a current value. And then we just can simply take the difference here. And then that's, we just keep doing that. And then we just see, is that smaller than our previous result? And so that will allow us to do that. And let's see what that would look like actually for our, so let's say our numbers would look like this, right? So we'd have... 12, 48, 49. So at first, our last value is going to be negative in, or just infinity, right? So L equals infinity. So we're going to compare these two values. That's going to be infinity. This is our cur to start off. Then we update the last value over here. Now this is our cur. Check here. Now we update again. This is our cur. This is last and so on. So you're just simply updating last to be the current value and then you go to the next value. So this will be last again. And this will be cur, check these two, and, and so on. So we can check two values that are next to each other without actually using an array by just having a last value and a result. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Let's code it up. And what I'm actually going to do is I am going to put in the last value and the result. I could do one of two ways. I could just make a, an array of size 2 because I want to have access to these values in my helper function. So I guess what I could technically do is I can just have like, uh, yeah, let's just do like, uh, results. No, actually, let's, let's do it here. So these will be like um. These will be variables of this class that we can access wherever we want. So we just say result equals. Let's make that infinity because we're trying to minimize it. And then our last value, we're going to make that infinity as well, right? Because we are going to initialize the initial last value to infinity. Because like when we're at this uh, one, we want to compare one to infinity, but we never want that value to be, you know, in the output. We only care about nodes after the first node. Okay, so let's do that. And we're going to have a helper function as well. So we're going to define a helper function here. It's going to take a node. And then we are going to, uh, we are going to go through our nodes and we're going to actually make sure to never handle a null node. So remember, we need to go left if we can, right? So our function for a in order traversal is going to be, I can write it down, so it's going to be left root right for the in order traversal. So that's what we need to do. So we need to check if um, node.left, then we need to do that. So then we call helper uh, node.left. And once we call this helper node.left, we're going to have some output. We don't really care about the output, but we, we, what we do know is after we call this, our last value will be whatever whatever like the last value was, right? So like in this case, we're going to be at this one. And then, um, so we're going to go all the way down here, and then we're not going to have a last value here. But when we return up to this two, our last value would be this one. So remember how we did our last value in our picture, right? We need to so now we, we know that our, like our last value will be whatever it was initialized to in here. Now what we need to do is once we're at the root, we need to check what's the difference between the last value and our root node. 
And so that we're going to do that here. So we're going to do self.res equals minimize self.res. And then it's going to be absolute value of no.val minus. Well, it was actually the other way in my picture, right? So it was actually self.last value minus no.val. Right in this picture, like we, we update our values and it was uh, L minus C and C is the current node we're at. So that's pretty much this. Now, like let's say we are at this two node. So we just what we just did is we just said, okay, our result is the minimum of the result minus the difference between the node that we're currently at and the node we were at before. But now what we also have to do is we have to update our last value now, right? We have to update our last value and then we have to go right. Because when we go right, we need to we need to compare the value we're at going right to the previous value, which is the node we're currently at. So we need to update the last value here. Equals node.val. Then we need to go right if we can. We're gonna make sure to avoid null nodes. So. Okay. And so that's pretty much it for the helper function. So remember, if we can go left, we go left. Then we check, is our result smaller than the, our last our last visited node and our current node? And then we have to update our last visited node to be the current node, because then we're traversing farther down. You can't just simply check the node to like the node to its left and its right, because you are going to have some cases where uh, you can try it yourself, but you are gonna have some cases where you're not recur you're not like returning straight up. It'll so in which case your stuff will fail. You actually do have to update the last value in the helper function. You can't just say like if you have a left, compare the left and the root, and then compare the root and the right. It's not gonna work. Okay. And so for this now, I think we are done there. So now we just simply call it on the root, and then we return self. Probably screwed a bunch of stuff up, but take a look. Okay, nice. okay, perfect. So that's it for this problem. Now let's do the time and space. And hopefully that makes sense to you. If you, if you want to code up the easier version, like I said, you can just have an array of the nodes that you visit. And so you just go left. And so what you would do is you would go left and then right when you do the, instead of this last value, this is where you would put your value into the array. So you go left, put the value into the array, then go right, and then you can compare the values. But pretty much you gotta understand that instead of putting the value into the array, we're just updating the last value so we can have one integer instead of a giant array. So for time, um, so we have to go through every node once. So that's gonna be big O of n. And for space, so our worst space, our worst case space, we're actually not saving any space because let's say we have something like this and so on. Like if all our nodes, if we have to go down the entire node, then this recursive stack is actually going to be O of n. So worst case scenario, it's going to be O of n, but average space is going to be for a BST is actually going to be a log n. And so average space, we are saving space because we're not using an array. But worst case, it's uh, this whole array, like this whole tree would be an on one recursive call stack. So that's why you get in for tree problems is definitely worst case, you know, it's not going to change. But for the average case, which is super likely, we, we do save a ton of space. And so, yeah, like you can try also running on leak code, like let's see what our time and stuff was. Yeah, I mean, I, th I do think like this problem has probably been solved enough to where most people have it here. But yeah, um, if you try it the other way with the array, I'm sure it'll take more space. Okay, so that's all for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.